Let's consider a skydiver. So here is Earth, and here is a skydiver. Okay, so skydiver goes so up high, therefore it can earn a lot of velocity and the rubbing of you know air molecules on on the body of the skydiver. Basically, it's very noticeable because the height is so much. If the height is very little, you know, air molecules really, really doesn't have that much effect of rubbing a uh, rubbing effect of or air resistance for for you know falling objects that are very close to Earth. But when they are very far away from Earth, then that that rubbing against that frictional force due to air resistance is more noticeable, is more pronounced. Okay, so for skydivers that are, you know, that are falling on or er, uh, falling down, we know that free falling object because of gravity, any free falling object earns at one in one second earns ten meters per second to their speed. Right? They add up. They add ten meters per second to their speed. Now the skydiver. When he falls down, the the velocity vector for him is gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Let's just draw Earth down here. So suppose this is Earth. So the velocity gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And you know, I said if velocity grows, air resistance grows. Okay. However, the skydiver. Has one constant weight because the skydiver, the mass for the skydiver stays the same, g stays the same. So mg, m times g for the skydiver stays the same. However, air resistance gets bigger and bigger as he falls down because as he falls down, the velocity gets bigger and bigger. Hence, air resistance force. Resi air resistance and any frictional force always, always exert on the objects opposite to the motion of them. So if the skydiver is falling down, air resistance acts upwards. Now, at some point where his velocity is big enough, air resistance, air resistance force turns out. To be equal to the weight of the skydiver. At that point, these two cancel one another out, and F net becomes zero. Therefore, now we go to the first category of objects. If F net is de uh, is zero, then your object, if it's moving with some velocity, it keeps going with the same velocity, and that's called terminal velocity. Okay, so this is the definition for terminal velocity, and terminal velocity comes into play when when you are so up high from Earth that you can. Have a big enough air resistance force on your body such that the air resistance cancel out the weight of your body because the weight of your body stays the same. You know the mass, the stuff that's inside you is the same times g, which is ten meters per second squared. This is a constant <clears throat> downward force. However, air resistance grows bigger and bigger as velocity grows. At some point, it grows such that it actually becomes equal to the weight. Therefore, and we know air resistance and any frictional force acts opposite to the motion. If it's falling down, air resistance is upward. If if I throw this up, then air resistance is downwards. Then at at the point where these two cancel each other out, F net turns out to be zero. At which our object goes with constant velocity, we call it terminal velocity. So this is basically the 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 meaning of terminal velocity, and I'll do um you know I'll go over the next um part of the material, namely the free body diagram and all that sort of stuff in the next video. Bye bye.